Hi guys, it's Irene Sprites here. I'm here with a quick video on how to apply the rubber bands properly onto larger braids. Today, my client is gonna get some larger box braids. We are going to apply the rubber band method. And the reason why we're going to apply them is one, because her braids are larger. And because they are larger, it can definitely cause her roots to grow out quicker if she were to just braid them in with no rubber band. So I'm going to add rubber bands today. And um, the benefit of doing them is to keep the scalp cleaner, of course, but then also for her scalp, her um, new growth not to come out so quickly. So this is a great option when you're doing much larger braids. All right, so first I have already applied my Shining Jam down to her scalp. And I'm just taking the end of my rat tail comb and I'm just cleaning up the product so I can make sure that the parts are nice and clean. And that's pretty much how I get nice, clean parts, you guys. I know I get a lot of questions about how I get my parts so clean. I just use Shining Jam and a good rat tail comb. That's it. All right, let's continue watching. Okay guys, so we are now at the part where I'm going to start applying her rubber bands. Um, in this clip, I'm wrapping them about six to seven times. Um, I'm making sure that as I wrap them, that I'm not wrapping them too tightly. And I'm also making sure that her um, rubber band sticks nicely to her scalp. Her hair is much thicker, so I had to make sure that um, the rubber band was laying nicely so that way it keeps it nice and clean versus too puffy um, and it creates a puffy braid versus it laying nicely for um, a nice clean gripped braid okay so that's how the rubber band should look once it is applied correctly um, as you can see it's not too tight okay let's continue watching <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so now we are starting our second row. The first row has about three braids. So my second row should have about no more than four braids, four to five braids on the second row. So when I say braid, you guys, I'm really talking about the parts. However, they're going to turn into braids. So please do not mind me when I say braids. Um, I do mean parts, um, but those parts will then turn into um, our larger box braids, okay? So you want to comb that product through nice and clean, and then you are going to go ahead and start applying those rubber bands that you have already oiled um, to make sure that it doesn't cause any more breakage, or, um, well, not any more, but any breakage at all, and that um, it continues to allow her hair to prosper um, correctly as she is wearing her braids. All right, let's continue watching.
Okay guys, so at this point, I am going to get ready to start working towards the crown of her head. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I part out my sections towards the top. Um, I continue to keep going into that U-shape um, direction. And wh why I do that is because I feel like it allows me to fill in um, her hair bent much better and apply more braids so that way it's filled in nicely and because they're larger braids um, I feel as though this is how it should go um, as far as filling them in nicely so you shaping your parts is kind of more ideal um, you don't have to follow my method this is just what I like to do so definitely go for what you feel is best for yourself or your client and if you notice um, her edges are much thinner towards the front um, her mom was telling me that she likes to get some sew-ins done and she thinks by the threading in the braids of doing her sew-ins is causing her some breakage towards her front where her edges would start. Um, she doesn't get braids often, uh, maybe about once or twice a year she'll come and get, get braids. But other than that, she just wears her real hair or she'll wear um, a sew-in. So um, I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do for those areas in the front where her hair is much thinner. All right, let's continue watching.
Okay guys, so here is the part um, that I said I would show you as far as what I was going to do with her edge line um, as far as grouping the hair. Instead of using the rubber bands, we opted for the braiding here to apply an anchor braid. Um, you guys know that I love to use the anchor braid on shorter pieces of hair. Um, you can braid over this anchor braid or you can crochet an additional piece through which are under this braid that we are applying to add extra hair for support and then still braid on top of both. So either or is definitely um, up to you, but I'm just going to braid on top of that braid um, to complete out my anchor braid process. So that's pretty much how the anchor braid will look. You see that um, no rubber band is needed on that part. Um, it's gripped nice and neatly. And it's going to be protected as she wears the larger braids um, throughout her time being. Now, you guys, when applying the anchor braid method on shorter pieces of hair, particularly the edges as well, do not keep the braid hanging or just dragging it, you know, after it has grown out from the roots. Please take them down once you see that new growth start. Take it out and refresh it whether that it means you do it by yourself or go back to your braid or have her refreshing. However, it needs to come out once you start seeing the new growth immediately and you need to redo it. You don't want the braid to be hanging because it could cause breakage. You want it to always be fresh and you want it to always be, t um, not, now I'm not saying tight as in pain, but tight as in, you know, not hanging. Okay. So that pretty much sums up that. Please, please, please make sure you redo it. All right, let's continue watching. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, so a funny, um, a funny moment right here in this clip. My client, Lauren, her mother, Nicole, she's a hairstylist as well, and um, she actually grew her daughter's hair out so beautifully. Her hair is so gorgeous. However, we were making a cute little joke because her mom just swears she can braid, and so she's always telling us that she's going to braid either my hair or Lauren's hair and how she's going to hook us up, and we're just like, yeah, no thanks. And so I was telling <laughs> her mom, um, that I heard about how she was trying to attempt to do um, Lauren's box braids because Lauren was not having it. She's in college and she has to be seen on campus looking nice. She just can't have her mom testing in her hair. And so she was looking at me all crazy because I told her mom what she said. I thought that was pretty funny. Anywho, this is what we're doing now. We're just braiding it down to the tips and I'm just going to keep applying the braids in. I really think that this style is really cute and fun for the young girls. Um, you know, I'm more of a, I'm, I like to wear my braids more of the medium or small um, box braids, small knotless braids. The bigger braids have never been my thing, but this is definitely a trend for my younger clients. So I definitely enjoy doing them for my younger clients because this is definitely up their alley. This is what they come for. They come for styles just like this. Um, but however, um, I think that her braids are coming out very beautifully and I'm um, happy that she's loving her braids so far. All right, guys, let's continue watching. <music> Okay guys, so this pretty much sums up my video. I could not do a completed video because she had to head to class. So our little Miss Lauren has to go. Um, so now I'm gonna show you guys the final results. I will put all description links down below in my description box for how to book with me and for all products that I'm currently using today. Also, don't forget to follow me at Instagram at Irene's, at Irene's Braids. You can also email me at Irene's at gmail.com for any questions that you may have for me. Um, until next time, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.